You're watching Notepad with me, Ibrahim Sani. I won't touch much about the issue of politics except for this single issue, which is jumping parties. Right now, Pakatan is having a crisis of confidence where they now have to face the fact that a bunch of AMNO politicians are going to enter their market. And right now, amongst all the four parties, it seems that Bersatu is most eager to accept these kind of individuals. To a point where the president of Bersatu has even issued a statement saying that there will be a special committee to actually evaluate a bunch of politicians coming in and whether or not they are, number one, free from corruption, number two, whether or not they have any outstanding cases in courts and a bunch of other things before they are accepted to Bersatu. What this means is that despite the checks and balances that are being put in place, Bersatu is actually quite fine with them entering the party except that there has to be some form of criteria that is put in place. They are not rejecting these Omno politicians outright and they are more than happy to accept them if they have a clean slate. For instance, Masir Miyati or Mustafa Muhammad. These are the kind of individuals that Bersatu wants to accept. If you look at and if you compare and contrast among the other parties, I'm talking about DAP, PKR and Amana. They didn't mention or they didn't make any overtures into accepting these AMNO MPs with or without a special committee to evaluate their worthiness to enter the party. The, the argument is that they are fine with existing uh, members of parliament that they have or for that matter, adduns that they have and more importantly, on principle, they do not want to accept people that were in AMNO before. Over the weekend, I went back to my kampong, Johor Bahru and I spoke to a bunch of uh, relatives on what they think about this jumping party. And they argued very simply that it's good for these AMNO politicians to join Bersatu. This is to strengthen the Malay voice in parliament. So what this means is that these individuals, people like my relatives for instance, believe that if AMNO politicians stay in AMNO, they might not, number one, be able to speak well in terms of voicing Malay concerns, but number two, do not provide the necessary check and balances that non-Malay AMNOs, uh, non-Malay MPs voice out, particularly if the non-Malay MPs are from the government side or in Pakatan Harapan. So these are the general concerns that they have, and I don't know whether it can be validated or not, and I'm pretty sure there's no objectivity in terms of these uh, views are, but subjectively speaking, that's what the sentiment is on the ground, and that's what the sentiment is currently not being addressed by any members of parliament right now. So that matters most. Are the current MPs currently in Pakatan Harapan addressing the concerns that are currently happening on the ground right now, particularly in the Malay heartland? I don't think so. Let me know what you think on the comments below. Thanks very much for watching and goodbye.